Three vessel brewing setups are the ultimate, and most of us aspire to own one. Yet a lot of people have them and they are still simplifying their brewing systems. Well, I ask a super experienced home brewer in Australia what he's doing with his three vessel system, and he explained how he's migrating away from it. Now, watch to the end to see how he's using spunding to carbonate his beer and also what the experts think of how he's changed his brewing setup. Welcome to my brewery. My brewery is quite a straightforward one, but it's evolved over the years. I used to do a full three vessel system with a Herms, which is under there, and built my own control panel, all very wonderful. Haven't used it for three years. So the one thing that has been retained from the original three vessel system in my custom one vessel system is the March pump. The vessel is a $5 washing copper from a Garrow sale. There is a 65 litre malt pipe, effectively a stainless steel brew in a bag. The system is no sparge, i.e. full volume, so there's less messing around. The wort is continuously recirculated and with the Auburn's DSPR 320, control is easy. The pulley arrangement takes all the hard work out of lifting the full malt pipe. For the boil, I use an over the side 2400 watt drum heater and regulate the boil using the DSPR. I use an immersion chiller, uh, which is really good for hop stands. The wort goes into an all rounder. The commercial fermentation fridge is controlled by brew pileus. And the final shot is the all rounder in action. I sometimes ferment under pressure, but mostly use spunding to carve the beer. One of the best investments I made was to get water plumbed into the garage, which has made cleaning up so much easier. And that's it. Cheers. I certainly admire his prowess in taking over his garage and turning it into a brewery. And how cool is that? That's his passion. He's invested in a lot of amazing equipment. And he also seems to have that mechanical uh, prowess where sometimes if you go advanced in home brewing, you really do start to tinker in the equipment, the hardware side. And he clearly gets that. The thing that I see when I see something like that is, is just remember home brewing is a spectrum, just like everything, right? So far over on one side, so far over on the other, sometimes just in the middle. And what we just saw is an amazing brewery on the home level that's very proficient in brewing lots of batches for, for a lot more brewing throughout the That is super fun for somebody that wants to express themselves in that way. And I bet he makes amazing beer, but he certainly knows how to work with hardware. I see a theme and it's one I see a lot lately and it's Peter started, well, I don't know where he started, but in terms of he made this awesome three killer control panel, ultimate in control, I bet. I bet he could do double batch days, he could do all kinds of things, but it sounds like he decided, eh, I don't do that often and I can simplify my life and go to a simpler, a one vessel, remove the malt pipe concept, which I think we'll see resonate. But in other words, simplifying the brew day, as long as you still keep the control and still able to make great beer. What I like is it teaches us how this hobby can evolve. And it's a bit of an iceberg. Once you get started, you can really go down a lot of different areas and explore a lot of new things. Now, this was part of a longer event series on how much fun home brewing can really be. It was full of clips of various home brewery setups, and I'll put a link to it up here in the cards and in the description. Please also consider giving this video a like and help keep us on the air through Patreon support. Also, please share with me your top takeaway down in the comments below.